very big upset because he can help the rest of your roam clear out tremendously, gathering you loads of info on the Dokubi, and also providing a lot of good cutoff angles with that DMR. So my question is for RTV, is how are they going to set up those early engagements correctly? And an instant Dokubi ban, I feel like for RTV, they might be shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with that. But to be fair, they're on the defensive side first, and they've got plenty of other great options like Jackal and Lion. So it might not be a big issue, but as a team that brought out Dokubi quite consistently, it is a little jarring. Uh, although we do know SSG to also be a team that brings a lot of Dokubi, I think Yeti is the typical guy to uh, yes. to do that. But SSG instantly respond with Buck and Castle. Well... Buck is definitely an odd band for bank, but he does find use. So he brings hard reach charges, which could be really useful for uh, attempting a basement execute. Uh, and especially, too, if you're bringing a buck with those hard reach charges, you only need one other hard reach. And he's really useful at clearing out the roam. Not only if you're doing top down, you can go all the way to the top floor, start flushing out those rovers, but horizontally creating really long cutoff so because so many of those walls on the uh on the middle floor are destructible so buck even though there's not a lot of verticality on the basement you still see him brought because he's useful pretty much everywhere and castle also uh, an operator that reality tv used quite a bit almost every round on their uh their middle and top floors so not surprising there either also, in general, just to remove one of the main vertical attackers you're going to bring in the round, if you end up killing Sledge, good chance there's no other source of proper vertical for the offense, so it's just less options that Rowdy TV might have, especially since they are a team to bring out both the Buck and Sledge to really speed up that roam clear on the top floor by getting vertical once they have top floor and then they start pushing away defenders from tellers and archives, for example, which, funny enough, is the bomb site that RTV is selecting for round number one. Um, it can give you a lot more wiggle room. So RTV starting out, like I said, over in Tellers and Archives, running a couple of trap operators as well. We see Hat and Tristan on the Capcan and Frost respectively. And they also have Mr. B on the Azami. So that really could bolster up not only the roam extension that you're doing on the top and middle floor, which funny enough, we see a couple of key bears right next to that kitchen extension, but also during the late round too, if you have a couple saved up, that could also funnel SSG a little bit better too. The fact that they're playing Tellers too is, uh, is odd. Not your usual primary site, especially with how powerful lockers tends to be. Uh, also a note that, I, I don't know how important it is to uh, John, but in getting the vertical with, uh, well, not only you know Buck used for cutoffs more than Sledge, but in getting that vertical and with how big Bank is, Sledge is slower. So maybe they're also trying to reduce the pace of reality TV? I'd have to agree. I and of that's course, a possibility. two is greater than one, so again, only Having that sledgehammer, it's going to just take even longer to get that vertical down, too. So, inadvertently, yeah. And speaking of uh, getting vertical down, of course, the top floor take coming through for SSG. And Fultz is already in or about to be in long desk, but instead, he'll skate right by it. Hitting the crab walk, daring Tristan to uh, peek him. But instead, it's Yeti outside the main lobby repel to get our lead off frag. Tristan already has his cap kid traps down, but that's a top floor roamer done and dusted. Yeah, good job just holding your teammates flank, making sure no one can creep up gold stairs, get yourself a free entry. And now for Reality TV, they might begin to forfeit this top floor as they don't want to lose any more bodies. You could maybe see someone getting really aggressive by marble stairs, but again, that's a major gamble that if RTV flounder, now they're down two entire defenders, and SSG can begin to get vertical down. So your anchor coverage is already going to be much weaker, especially if you're, again, just down less defenders that could hold the bomb site from an execute. The C4 also missing, and I think the second, uh, yeah, both C4s now gone, not really hitting anything, and they have the main hatch open into small office. I wouldn't be surprised if they have the uh, corner hatch open as well. SSG are making pretty good, have a pretty good time of things, especially considering they still have 35 seconds left, and they are just about on the site. All that's left to do is for Bosco to open the main wall, and this heralds the execute. I mean, it's such a massive hole into the middle of that bomb site. There's not a lot the defense can do unless they start winning fights, but hot and cold on that really long cutoff takes out one, and Giddy just backs up into the same angle. Ignorance there from the Cade. Mr. B lands a beautiful headshot, but Fultz is right around the corner for the trade. In fact, they dome each other because the last player on site was dead, it's a win for the attack. 
And I've really got to commend SSG for just having such an early start over by lobby. We saw how effective Yeti was not only at, of course, getting the opening gunfight and providing coverage for his teammates, but also forcing Tristan to maybe feel inclined to take that gunfight by going up gold. We saw him pop out a Retero drone immediately, that being Yeti. So the shield's now gone Attackers in that first floor. And, and with, again, killing Tristan so early and no one being able to replace that spot because now it's a vulnerability for the defense. Now the Thermite of Bosco can rotate across the map, get the wall opened up, and now you've got this cutoff angle, that hot and cold can comfortably hold and make sure that no one can retake the site effectively. And again, just in general, because you have lobby control so early, although you only have 30 seconds left, you know it's for free, you know it's free map control, so it's not going to be that hard for SG to rotate down below and get the other wall opened up. So that was just beautiful execution and coordination by SSG just to start off on the right foot and bank. Plus, uh, certainly helps with two people just swing hot and cold holding a long Five cutoff for free. <laughs> the SSG take the first bit. round in stride, now looking attack to attack the lockers. The Gonna bring the Maverick to help assist those hatches. Of course, with uh, Cade being on the board, they just want to make sure he's not being played, though. Uh, probably because Reality TV, um, I would assume that Reality TV assumed that SSG would be taking the Thatcher, which is why Kate wouldn't really be all too useful on this site. And in general, it just promotes Red TV to want a bunker, which I feel like that was a, a big issue for them against TSM because they just didn't roam at all on bank. It gave TSM a lot of map control very early in the round. It allowed them to have like a minute, minute 20 when setting up the execute on top of having a ying. It just caused so many issues for Reality TV that their anchors would crumble, even if they had a lot of utility to push back TSM. Now they're trying to go for the opposite, actually having a pretty solid roam team composition, having Mr. B on Legion, Hat with the Solus, and you've got the Oryx as well. This really does seem like you want to put a lot of pressure on that drone economy and maybe work a pick as you're falling away too. But so far on that top floor, no one's fallen just yet, except for the roamers now heading into the first floor. And I think this the switch up that Reality of, are having with their philosophy definitely favors them, especially going up against a team like SSG. As long as Reality TV don't peel away the roam into those set angles that SSG like to play. Because if SSG can clear your roam without really needing to clear your roam like this, with faults just walking down a staircase, then they're going to be taking that control in stride. Reality TV lose the first pick once again, and Hat looking to drop down to full, fully finish the roam. He's just waiting for a couple of drones to sail past him, and then he can just make the drop down. Rice potentially looking to go for a trade, playing on marble stairs, but losing out on that smoke could be a huge error. Yeah, there's the yellow ping, and still, Hat hasn't dropped. This could be a free pick, and there it is. Beautiful angle, vaulting on top of the table to spot the Solus' head, and now SSG are up too. The beautiful angle from the drone, too. It was, like, on the corner of the, uh, of the stock hatch, so... Hat didn't see it was there. Maybe if he used the Solus gadget, he would have been able to spot out that he was on camera, but it was not to be. Three versus five, make it yep. two versus five as Rice swings up and only cuts Yeti down to about one HP. Really unfortunate. The Claymore even on the hatch, just to make sure that Tristan's not going to go for an Oryx flank. You really, you really have to admire the, the thoroughness and the due diligence of SSG. They have the angle on the Hibana. Bosco gets headshotted by Giddy, still playing in Garage, but there's a nade to meet him, and Hot and Cold's getting the plant down. Tristan left in a one versus four, getting tagged up. They know where he is, especially now with those shots raining out, and the plant has been confirmed by Hot and Post plant for Tristan to try and work himself out of, and SSG, again, just clinical. Really no better way to put it here for SSG. Starting out in the right foot on their roam clear. Now leaving Tristan in. I think we can put it as an unwinnable position. You've got people up above watching on cams. You've got people just in close quarters combat being fed information. I mean, look at the drone, the highlight right there. They had Tristan's number oh, yeah. and they finally shut him down. Yeah, there was no way RTV were coming back from that post line position. But again, briefly talking about it. The roam clear was great. It was done in about a minute on that top floor, which is pretty standard. They only lost about two to three drones in total. And the coordination in the mid round 
was also fantastic. We saw both Fultz and Rampy timing that effort of getting vertical down and pushing from square stairs to deal with Mr. B as he's isolated inside of archives. And now he's got both vertical and a horizontal angle to deal with. Not a good spot for him. His best bet was probably to fall back. But again, he was thinking, if I can take somebody down with me, then that makes my roam even more valuable than just falling away and keeping things at a five on five. That didn't happen. And then as well, the coordination with the player on that hatch, gathering info over by stock and coordinating with Fultz as he now wrap around uh, from square staircase into kitchen proper. That was also perfectly done. They eradicated the realm. On top of that, they guarantee Rice didn't get any kills mid round because Yeti was just playing distance against the shotgun, which was perfectly done. And then they got a five on two X2. I mean, what more could you ask? You can't. Exactly. I think you can ask for more, job. You could ask for a Ying and SSG will provide because now they have one. As well as the Thatcher Rampy now bringing uh, bring the EMPs to combo with the dual hard breach from Bosco and Hot and Cold. With how good SSG have been with their intel so far, let's see if they're on top of their utility game too with Tristan holding that Wamai stock shield that we know so well. But of course, there's a Flores. False is going to pilot the drone down the marble stairs, but it's actually going uh, not onto the shield. Oh, wait, no, it is. What the heck? It was like invisible it was like, on our yeah, screen. Yeah, it was but like the... bugged. So never mind. Yeah. I, dude, I thought it was because like it was going downstairs to the basement. I was like, where is Don't worry, it you're not crazy. Yeah. yeah, so it did destroy the shield. Yeah. All good. Luckily, we had that outline, so it wasn't like impossible to yeah, see, but it was just really there. janky. But oh, again, yeah. we the... just have an observer bug, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's invisible. the second one. And also, they left the hatch soft for an open area site. I think that's a little concerning. I mean, obviously, SSG wouldn't have had a problem removing it because A, there's no Cade, and B, they have Habana. But kind of just got the hatch open for free. Bosco's now lurking up blue stairs. He's probably going to want to get this quad wall opened up once the oh, defense realizes that he's here. But he might get a freebie. Yeah, this could be a free kill oh, onto no. Rice. But he falls back. Too much patience there. Actually allows Rice to fall back. But he gets aggressive well, once again, and it backfires. Rice, I guess maybe assuming that the ace charge came from the hallway and in the meantime ssg have just barreled uh, their way into sight rampy's planting it's, it's down reality tv stuck in a 3v5 retake as hat fell earlier giddy finally coming back to the site looks for the hibana but loses it to hot cold mr b cut down by bosco watching bottom square and tristan's the last one alive in a 1v5 post plant and yeah he's not winning that one hot and cold with the finisher and ssg a flawless take and you talked about the information that's been so potent for SSG. That was most definitely the reason why that execute went so well. Someone probably figured out one way or another, hey, there is just rice on the objective. RTV would be forced into a brutal retake if we just hit the go button. You even saw SSG just completely forget about opening up the quad wall because that would give Mr. B more opportunities to take gunfights and maybe slow down SSG. So the second that Rice overstays his welcome by that double door. Once he dies, everyone just books it. And not only do they have presence over by kitchen, they've got someone on the Predator window. I think there was someone maybe trying to drop the hatch or watch an angle up above and through stock so no one could retake from that position. So everything was also accounted for. And now SSG have numbers literally because they're in a five on four and figuratively because they just have almost all their players on the bomb site, if not right next to the bomb site, holding the rotates down so RTV cannot come back and try to defend against the defuse. SSG just playing so perfectly in this first half, already forcing a timeout by RTV, which is kind of what we saw back on their match against TSM last night, and that didn't work. So really, we might just have history repeat itself, Harrison. This Attack looks very dire for reality TV. Yeah, and they have three kills in three rounds. Yep. It's uh, it's not good. And I, I was going to say, almost all of them are Mr. B, right? Yeah, it's Mr. B and Giddy. It's like late round impactless kills. Yeah, the, uh, what was it? The one kill that Giddy got was... I think killing, there was a round uh, where they got no kills, right? That's, that was last got, round. Yeah, round I thought saw. so. Giddy got the kill on a hot and trying to plant with the garage angle and then immediately got naded. That was his only kill. Yep. So it's it's not been a good time for Rally TV so far. SSG are just proving why Bank is their playing ground. I mean, they look absolutely flawless on it. I think especially a map like Bank really thrives off of the the SSG drone style that they have too. Mm -hmm. And Reality TV aren't really doing anything to stop SSG. 
I think that's the main takeaway here, is that because of SSG's info, because of how good the road clear has been, they are simply allowing SSG to set up. They've got to find some way to deny all this info, because you deny all the info, you deny a good portion of that, you know, Intel fed Rome clear and you deny the early setup that SSG have been having and I just don't know why reality TV aren't playing into more mute and Mozzie or, or Solus. Did see Solus brought a little bit, but that's been the real extent to RTV's info denial and oh, this looks really devastating for Mr. B getting caught in a bad spot and now he's got to worry about Yeti as well. Yeah, I think Mr. B is just moments away from death and there it is. Thankfully, an entry was found by RTV, but it's not long lasted. Hot and Cold finds an immediate tray in SSG. They're back up in the man advantage and the Rome game is beginning to wither away. It's so tough for reality TV right now to, to stop what SSG is doing. They have no no counter to this drone game, no counter to the info, because even if you do try and spread yourselves out to stop the multiple kind of pressure point style of attack that SSG have on their roam clear right now, well, in doing so, like I said, you're spreading yourselves thin. SSG are just going to take that one, you know, someone like Fultz or Rampy is just going to take that 1v1 that's still going to be assisted by info, and then you've lost the trade potential. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't moment right now for Reality TV. And now Hot and Cold gets a second, just dropping the corner hatch and frying Hat, leaving Rice and Giddy on site in a two versus four. Now, granted, a smoke and an echo are probably the two guys you would want alive, given a 2vx situation. But the way SSG have been playing, I don't think they're going to be caught out by those yo guys. Yeah, they're not going to forget about Guinea. They were hunting him down when he was playing by Garage as Warden. Giddy's probably going to be in the exact same location, so they're going to be looking for him once again. No, Giddy's in an even more aggressive position, looking to take some sort of gunfight, just hoping he can do something for his teammates. That isn't just utilizing the yokais to stop a plant, because with 40 seconds left, the yokais and smoke grenades, they might not not be enough, especially if SSG just kind of use their brute force in terms of having two men up against RTV. First gas getter comes out at about the 40 second mark, so a decent time for Rice to start letting them rip, but Giddy can't really sit on his yokais and wait. Someone else is going to have to be calling for him because he's got to worry about the hatch presence and the nade is being ripped. Giddy avoiding it for now. It was put back in the pocket of Rampy, I believe. Giddy is just going to expose himself to the hatch, though, and now leave Rice alone with the gas canister going out, but it's killing Rampy. Rampy's got to get off the plant, but he repositions. He knows he's got enough man count to cover him, and Rice is stuck in a corner. Hot and cold, three kills on the round. I, like, why did Giddy just walk into the hatch? Did he not have any yokais left? I think the problem is, yokais are not, Giddy has to help the smoke without his drones. He has to watch the hatches for his teammates, and he's figuring, well, I'm not Warden. I can't just eat a flash grenade, so I've got to swing this guy while he's gunned down. That is Giddy's only option, and I think the bigger blunder that goes into the, the causation of that is Hat dying. Hat did not fall off the roam at a good time frame and instead overstayed his welcome on the mid floor. Let's say if the cap can's able to fall back, now Giddy might be granted the luxury of playing in the back of the map and utilizing his cams to stop a plant once the smoke grains dissipate because that could have left us in about 15, maybe even less than 10 seconds on the round. That could give you enough time to actually get somebody off the plant and if no one can look for the Okai drone in time, that's the round one simply just burning away the seconds on the clock. But again, Giddy has to help the smoke by watching those hatches because, again, SSG can just use brute force by them having a 4v2 advantage and then execute. So RTV, they were just, they were spread way too thin. And again, SSG took full advantage of that. Yeah, and uh, by the way, it also, it wasn't a 3k for uh, for Hot and Cold. I just realized it was a 4k because he also killed, he was the one on the hatch who killed Giddy. Uh, and uh, our observer, our beautiful observer, Easy, shout out to Easy. You should know him, uh, all of you should know him very well. Uh, told me that the Twitch drone, the Twitch did zap at least one of the drones. So it's also very, because I was going to say, like, yeah, Giddy does have to watch the hatch, but the time was so low that with Rice setting out that last gas canister, if you just hide in garage, you could win the round off the yokais. But I, I'm going to assume that he didn't have any left, which, again, just kind of goes back to the thoroughness of SSG ensuring that those yokais were gone so they could do that late push. Because the man count doesn't matter, you know, if you've got five seconds and there's yokai on the board. And Fultz, walking in by himself, gets the early leadoff kill on a Mr. B. I mean, you can tell SSG is just confident 
about their matchup against RTV. Just not a care in the world. Already winning their first gunfight. Thankfully, Giddy can prolong this clear on the top floor. Yeti's currently injured, but I don't think RTV have info about that, so they can't finish him off. A revival could go down onto the Twitch. So in the meantime, things are pretty calm, but SSG, I mean, they really are just brute forcing their way against this roam clear once again, and, and Reality TV have truly had no response besides that one kill for Giddy, but now he's pretty low on HP. And it looks like Fultz is aware of Hat's position. There's the drone coming in yet again, and oh, Fultz gets smoked! Wow! wow. I wonder if maybe that was a bit of a missed drone. Uh, like, they had an idea, but they didn't know the exact location, but Giddy gets down, and what? Oh my god! Inside Tellers! Hat is gonna destroy another player, but yeah, as we can see, the players are complaining about it too. There's some server lag, so we might have a rehost after this round. Tristan gets Yeti, and Bosco's the last alive in a technical 1v3 with Giddy still on the floor. And yeah, he's up top. They really have no interest in rezzing him, so it'll be a 1v3 for the rest of the round. He is Ying. He can certainly make his own space should he place those Candela's well enough, but he's also got to contend with the Wamai. Those magnets are likely out, and they're going to be disrupting those Candelas. Well, at least Bosco's got time to gather info as well with his one drone left available to him. Giddy just moments away from bleeding out on the floor on the top. So that puts us in a true one versus three. Half a minute to go. Bosco's still looking for Capcan traps, and theoretically, RTV should win this round and be thankful about that. But like you mentioned, there's always a chance, right? Absolutely, but Bosco is worried about someone on the main stairs, of which there is no one. The second two Candelas go in, and he'll make his way into the bomb site. But there's a C4 to greet him. Doesn't matter if you're Flash, the explosive still does the work. Rice gets the finisher, and Reality TV wow. are on the board. Wow, he just ate that Nitro Cell as well. Luckily for Hat, he did an amazing job of isolating out Fultz, winning that 50-50 gunfight, and also stopping the resurgence over in lobby as well. So that left. SSG pretty much out to dry, and at least they were able to eliminate the orcs up above, technically speaking, but still keeping that first floor player alive. It really did hold off the rest of SSG, so they could not execute correctly. They were just down players, etc., etc. And now we get to go back to CCTV, which so far has not been a solid site for RTV whatsoever. I think they've what, brought it out twice, yes, and they've lost pretty effectively on both ends, losing both of their main roamers each time, and their mid-round presence just... Uh, that also got flat-out denied. They really have had no response against SSG when going here, and now they're going for... I don't even know what you would call this composition. They still want to have a roam, obviously, but now they have even more to help assist the anchor by Mr. B just bundling up all of his Kona stations. I really hope their roamers who are low in HP can fall back and actually utilize them, though, because that has not been a recurring yeah. pattern. They've just kind of died every time instead. Literally. Rice has also yeah. opened the entirety of this wall into red. I mean, SSG have also, you know, not only has Reality TV lost this site twice, SSG planted in both of those rounds with, like, smoke and echo on the board. So SSG have demonstrated that they understand how to attack this site very well. Fault is now bringing Jackal to try and uh, mitigate this roam further. Uh, expedite the road clear, uh, you, you know, even more quickly than it's already been, which is which would certainly be impressive. I was gonna say, yeah, this is uh, this is really just continuing to add more salt to the open wound that RTV already has. Hat though, currently getting a hot streak towards the end of this first half. Starts out with the opening kill against Rampy. Luckily, with Fultz being on Jackal though, he's got a secondary shotgun, so the vertical will not be completely null and void. But Mr. B. He's now voided in terms of being up in the round. He's stuck on cams as faults will just barge in from top square. And now Tristan's got to worry about the rest of the people pushing him from the main hallway. And Mr. B just got kind of caught out between a rock and a hard place, but Tristan lands a nice shot onto faults to refrag his teammate. And now SSG trail. A man disadvantage. Three versus four. Still searching for this top floor roamer. Tristan not satisfied just yet. Doesn't want to fall off. He's got a tussle with Bosco and Hot and Cold, the two hard breachers who stun out main so they can start to cross. Now peeking in that long double door, but Tristan's backed off towards the windows. Now wrapping around, just evading the 
the sightlines from SSG. He knows he doesn't have to take these fights anymore. As long as he wastes time, it's going to be worse for SSG once they make it back down to the site with a smoke and an echo to deal with. But Tristan finally gets caught. Standing up and taking the pot shots at Bosco, Hot and Cold takes advantage of it, and we're equalized once again, but there's still rovers on the board. And both the Habana and Maverick used almost all of their stuns to deal with an Oryx who wasn't even a major threat. He was there again, like you said, just to waste time. He probably wasn't even looking to take a gunfight. He burned away so much out of SSG. And yeah, I think they're beginning to realize that they cannot go for a default execute as RTV just have too much to throw at them. Opening, yeah, that vault hatch maybe looking to go for a vault drop. Seeing a couple players in the middle floor could just herald them uh, to take that bomb site, but Giddy's gonna stop hot and cold in his tracks. I think falling back down, and defaulting. Pat's still upstairs. Yeti's just gonna go ahead and drop E1, looking for a pick. Will find Rice, but not win the gunfight, leaving Bosco alone, who will drop right after his teammate. But everyone's coming back. Everyone knows where he is as well. Giddy, the first line of defense, now had to try and back him up, but he loses the fight. Luckily, there's only seven seconds left. Rice also healed up by that Kona station, and Giddy from up over the bomb chassis finishes the round. I've got to commend it to the Rome. Finally having impact against SSG. You saw Hat winning that gunfight with Rampy for the most part by himself. So that's the sledge gone, which is definitely going to slow down a good majority of that. Rome clear we tend to see by SSG to force back people that are still lingering on the first floor. Not only that, but they also were able to eliminate the Jackal on top of that too. So the info also begins to dry up at that minute 30, minute 50 mark for SSG. And Tristan, he took full advantage of that. He did not give up the top floor for free. He just continued need to stay up above and he burned through all of the secondary utility that ssg had that they probably wanted to save for their execute so once they figured we cannot go in and do the same attack we have done every single round when cctv's been in play we've got to get creative we got to go in for a vault drop they attempted it and reality tv denied it very hastily so Got to commend RTV for at least adapting towards the very end and, you know, making that tack timeout a little bit more useful. But it's still a 2-4 split. RTV, they have really got to speed up there the way they attack on bank because if they just repeat what they did against TSM, they're going to flounder. Yeah, it's uh, SSG. It seemed like once reality TV really started seeing the robe through, and sticking mm -hmm. to their guns, not giving up the positions, that's when they started finding success. I mean, it was still a, a, you know, an all-out war with frags going back and forth. It was never really mm -hmm. a, a super solid advantage, but they wasted a lot of time. And that was the most important thing because SSG, with the man count they had, were confident going Attacker into those final 15, 20 second executes because they could just cover every single possible angle and trade themselves out in like 5v2s, 4v2s and such. But now that Reality TV are actually getting their trades, you can't play with such little time like that. So finally, Reality TV, they take two in a row. They get that 4-2 half, which on bank is certainly not the end of the world. Sometimes it's attacker favored, but SSG's defenses, I'm sure, are going to be just as deadly, especially with Smoke, Echo, and now Goyo. Ten seconds remaining. Definitely seems to me like SSG want to bunker for round number seven. I think anyone Ten could seconds. point that out. There's still an option to roam a little bit, just to break a couple of drones and kind of recede back into the basement. You know, Yeti specifically having all of his util deployed, having a solid gun of that vector and a C4. If he really needs some extra backup, I can imagine he's the one roaming. And yeah, he's playing in the first floor, so he'll be a little bit active in round number seven, but not to a, a major degree. I like he has CCSG. So he's playing on the hatch fallback though. At least I got that correct. That's like half of the, <laughs> the prospect, but he's playing a little bit longer ranged with that shotgun, which honestly for open area, I don't think that's a bad idea, especially if they want to hop into Fritter window. I wonder why Rice is just driving his Rateros right, in the, right into open area. Like there was utility. It's already burned through two and no util has been destroyed for a very util heavy comp. Oh wow, Yeti, Yeti dropped down the hatch and then just ran right back up. That is so Chad. Not a care in the world. Maybe, I wonder if maybe he just <laughs> fell down the hatch like accidentally and was like, whoops. Let me maybe. get back up there. So uh, not only are SSG, you know, they have a light roam. They're playing for info denial. And I mean, the more info they can deny, the better it is, because even though they might not waste a lot of time, they've got so much utility on the site. And look at this. Reality TV don't even know where the Electro Claw is. Hat has used both his EMPs, and Mr. V standing there like 
Well, crap. Now what? <sighs> well, the small sacrifices you make, not bringing out the Thatcher and instead relying on those pocket MPs, not having enough info to use them well, they're going to be punished with its very limited range. And now RTV are kind of forced to deal with SSG head on. They're opening up this hatch in bottom square. So they have a nice cutoff angle, forcing the smoke to play blue. If he hasn't fallen back already, I don't know if Bosco is still holding blue stairs very practically. I don't think he is based on his silhouette. But still, RTV looking to go for, I would assume, more of a default approach in this round just because they cannot drop down the vault hatch. By the way, speaking of Bosco, uh, he rocked the rare smoke barbed. That's a... Uh... Well, they don't that's need that's two like shields, a, I guess, that's so like a fair enough. image. I feel like. <laughs> and uh, strange, too, that SSG had the shield on top blue with no Jaeger or Wamai. No projectile denial whatsoever. So Reality TV could find some, you know, work with those nades if Tristan is in a position to use them. But they've also only got one set. Rice spots out one of those Goyo packs. He'll deal with the other. I think that was a... Uh, was that a nade from Tristan? Oh, I think Tristan just naded the Goyos. That's a waste of utility right there. I would say at least for SSG, they can't pop the other one once you get that 20 second mark, so they have to rely on Bosco's smokes, but he's... He still has two of them in the 22nd mark. I think they'll be fine, and they've got Rampant Yokai's. This really is a plethora of utility, and I don't think RTV can really stop all of it. They're going to be really hard-pressed to get that plant down when they go for the attempt, but Hat's just going to drop lockers, and this could be enough chaos to get this plant down. Mr. B's sticking it, but the Yokai's coming through. There it is, Mr. B denied. The second burst primed and ready as the rest of Reality TV falls to C4 to finish. And SSG with an explosive round seven to open the defensive half. Yeah, and clearly you could see RTV did not want to go for this as their end game strategy, but only having pocket EMPs and not throwing them perfectly against the Cade Claw, they couldn't go for a vault elevator execute. And even if they went for that, I feel like it would still be challenging for SSG to not deny them of doing so. You've got so much info at your fingertips. You start hearing the hatches get opened up. Everyone just kind of rotates around and you still have two C4s, a few toxic babes. You've got plenty of util to deny that execute. It would just be a little bit easier for RTP to set that up in comparison to a default server execute. And I really also like the fact that Bosco decided not to waste even more time and resources over by Blue Stairs and went for the safer option of just bundling up in the bomb site with those toxic babes. That went a very long way for SSG, especially since, again, with the K Claws and nothing to stop them, they also couldn't open up the hatch that was directly in CCTV. So the site presence altogether was even stronger because RTV were limited with the angles they could use. Yeah, Bosco's decision making was really good. Not only falling off of blue, but also, you know, seeing that they still had so much utility, right? The Yokai's. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the, the smoke, the echo, and the glow. We didn't even highlight that they had three C4s. There was just so much stuff to deal with the plant. He could use that gas canister to stop Hat. Hat was like the one guy that could have maybe opened things up for the attack if he caused enough chaos towards the back, but Bosco just said no. You know what? I'm going to use my last gas canister on you. You can't push it. Abasco eventually got the kill, too. So, Reality TV, uh, back to the drawing board, I guess. Also, don't know why they took that long to get the top two floors. Because it was just Yeti, and it still took them to, like, 30 seconds to actually push site. They were they were just shaking in their boots when they saw Yeti with the TCSG. They did not know what so. to do. I, I mean, I'd be terrified, too. If I saw Yeti in an in-person environment, he would just stare me down. I, I can't really fall off TV for with that a TCSG. <laughs> yeah, that would. I, I think that'd be even even more scary. But Big guy RTV hoping down. to, yeah, hoping to shrug off that unsuccessful okay. entry. They've got Mr. B already up gold stairs, but there is a Mira and a Yokai. So Mr. B, he's going to be in a world of hurt, especially if no one comes to assist him anytime soon. Someone's got to help him, but this is also the play that Reality TV are known for. I mean, how many times have we, everyone in CL, talked about this, John? The Monty push made stairs. One mirror window already done thanks to Tristan. Once the push starts to come together, you're going to see that Iana separate from the pack, except maybe now it's Giddy. Somebody, point is, is um, going to go upstairs by Square. And Hot and Cold, despite literally watching the Monty just l lets him walk up and kill him. I think now, he had a little too much trust in Rampy. 
Oh, I, man, I guess, maybe. And now Giddy, the guy who we oh. talked about hitting the okay. back, is going to catch Rampy. Fault's the next to die thanks to that long crossfire from Rice, and everything is working out on this attack. Flawlessly right. done for RTV. Yeah, that was just questionable. And I don't really fault the elevator player, for example, or anyone near that hallway to not assist ag against the Montaigne because they just opened up that wall and the ace is obviously still watching it. But being so exposed to the Montaigne and not having a calm for Rampy, I think it was on the Oryx, to get aggressive and counteract that or just not expecting Mr. B to go gun up there that was that seemed a bit it seemed a bit <laughs> off i'm not gonna lie but you know for ssg they've, they've got rounds to bleed and again ceo it's a very tough site to defend not for that reason normally just because the window of hell presence which ended up becoming a little more helpful in the late round for rtv but they already had done their job but now they get to go to open area that being ssg and their comp looks fairly similar besides obviously the no echo and mira now they've got a focused composition based on extending on this top floor, breaking through a lot of info, which so far the info game for RTV hasn't been stellar besides maybe last round, I would say. Yeah, with, uh, and that was, you know, of course, aided by the unkillable drone, Monty. Right. I still, I still can't believe Hot just sat there. That was a very interesting round. I think we could put it like that. That was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> He was he was watching him in real time. And just even Mr. Took P was, was it didn't even look like by that. Dude, it didn't even look like Hotten attempted to get off the camp. <laughs> he just, he, he accepted just like, his oh. fate. Well, I'm dead. Like, by the way, like a true man. SSG set up two shields by stock. There's, there's the outside shield that you typically see the Wamai play on, like this one. That's really normal. And then there's one that was like inside stock. Yeah, that. Thank you, Easy. Dude, Easy's the goat. Look at that. Why? Is that so that Yeti can actually, like, if he needs to, can he play in stock? Is that the plan? So they can, like, yeah, I don't know, what's he's the also shield? Got, he's also got no utility to protect the shields. But he has a fall off of the hatch if he needs to open up with a shotgun. I oh, think the idea is, like, that's for. yeah, let's say theoretically that the, the shield by Janitor that's Hall gets broken. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> See, th there's no Yeti, like, there's nothing to stop that from happening. Well, really now know. he wasted the Gon 6 on the useless shield, so now this oh, one yeah, can stay up. Yeah. 10 billion IQ by Space Station Gaming. And yeah, now they have to walk into this deployable shield with no Flores, and there's uh -oh. someone out by CEO. Oh, Rampy's going for it. Oh, perfect opening kill. That's Diffuser, but I'm sure he's not going to be guarding it for that much longer. He'll just rat down the sewer tunnel if he can get away with this. Surely he hasn't killed the Zero as well. Okay, it was the line instead, my bad. I don't forgive you for mistaking the line of zero. Thank you. I'll do better now because you did not forgive me. Thank you. It's all about, uh, bro, now I forgot the word. Accountability. That's the word. Thank you. All about accountability. There it is. Rice is going to hit the Pengu drop right down the hatch as Zero hunting for Yeti, and the Frost does not want to mess with him. Falling away off, but Tristan eats a buttload of damage. But isn't finished. It said it's Fault who gets turned around on by Rice. And a man advantage once again for reality TV. But again, we got to highlight the a fact that Case is far afield. I would have thought they could recover it by now. They've got 40 seconds to do so. And they have the top floor control. So just simply repelling back down would take about 10 seconds or so. But I don't think RTV are going to go for that. They're going to try to commit to this 4v3 execute and just hope for the best, despite, you know, Tristan being super low and Rice not having a lot of HP. And oh, dear. With the secondary heart breach, it's going to take so <laughs> long to get that hatch opened up. They, they need they need Giddy to rotate. That's their best option. That was also really funny. <laughs> Hat, though, is just going to drop in, wipe the floor with Yeti. Hot and cold is a very nice trade, but... Rice has the refrag. I think that was three kills for, uh, oh no, because the, dude, you, now you got me messed up because you called the, the lion uh, zero outside. So it was two kills for Rice and uh, two for Hat. Mr. B, a bit of banter now that they've closed the gap. Things have looked significantly better for RTV. I think that goes without saying. Yeah, even though Rampy did hop out and get a free pick, Hat was there on the trade. So no man advantage for SSG, and now that is one less defender playing up above. So SSG, they, they feel a little more inclined to try to fall back a bit, not just give up more bodies. Now it's a bit easier for RTV to try to isolate them, and that eventually happens. 
Once RTV get back that man advantage, although they could not get the hatch opened up, they just had sheer numbers. And with only, I think it was what, two defenders alive? During that last second execute, they couldn't really extend that much over by, you know, archives, for example. So it was a lot of map control just instantly gained for RTV once they moved down a floor lower. But now we go back to CCTV, which was undisputably like the best round for SSG on their defensive yeah. half. So we could, there's a strong chance we see map point fairly soon for SSG unless RTV change something drastically like a Twitch pick, which if, if the drones get into sight quickly enough, that could be a lot of Vulcan packs just off the board, which would be very helpful. Absolutely. I think SSG reading into the fact that you know, Reality TV didn't know what the hell to do against this setup, they're literally playing the exact same strategy. Like, down to the utility placement and everything, but uh, maybe that Twitch Nook pick is going to shake things up. Giddy could hit Garage to take out the Echo, because they would have gotten the plant down if it wasn't for the Echo. Fair point to make. Also, the the small chance of Giddy either lurking yeah, down like Garage or Dirt Tunnel. That would be a really interesting thing to do. If Bosco's still over by blue and Giddy's aware of that, he tries to lurk down dirt as like a, a like serious cut off. Yeah, because you know the hatch will be opened up. That would give Bosco time to fall away if no one charges at him. So that could be an idea, but Giddy right now, he's a bit closer to garage. So if that were to happen, it would take a very big commitment from Giddy and a lot of time. Biblical from Giddy. The wall bang on the camera. Yeah. I do also like that Reality TV are, in fact, bringing Thatcher. So Cade will not be too much of an obstacle. Yeti falling back uh, quicker as well. So Reality TV are afforded a little bit more time, but are they going to make the most of it? About a minute and a half left. We're halfway through the round. They are, this time just completely ignoring the server side of things. So clearly in the previous attempt, they wanted to go for a vault drop and now they're allowed that they're allowed to do so, it's their main strategy. Well, they also have the backup plan now breaking both Vulcan packs with the help of that Twitch drone, like we mentioned earlier in the round. So that's also a huge benefit for reality TV. And again, they still have Giddy on Nook. So a lurk is always possible for RTV. But I think they want to save Giddy just for the nades, and then he'll become that menace in the late round once all of his utility has been sponged up, and he can just kind of do his own thing with a decent gun and a good primary gadget. And they have, like you said, the Goyo packs. Rice has found a lot of good work with that Twitch drone. I mean, the last one will get shot out, but he's already destroyed all of, or at least three of those Goyo packs. However, Hot and Cold gets the leadoff kill. Traded out by Giddy, thanks to the nade, but everyone on reality TV is falling. Hat's now the last one left. They've got info on him as well. He'll get a kill, but not a follow-up. An SSG, despite it coming a little bit closer, still lock out the site. And sadly, with no one lurking, you know, down below over towards either Blue Stairs or, or Dirt Tunnel, SSG can just kind of flip around the sites, essentially, and then begin to bunker a little bit closer towards CCTV, for example. We ended up seeing that. You still have those smoke grains, which you can throw at rain to stop anyone from executing the bomb site or dropping down hatches safely. And again, it's fairly easy to, to like, realize when an attacking team is executing for a vault style rather than just going in server because there is a clear lack of people over by server and now people are throwing stuff at you through hatches a lot more than you would typically see. So SSG were quick to figure out that was the plan A for RTV. They readjust and flatline RTV and now they're back on, or now they are on map point for the first time, not back on map point unless you're counting you know, their matches last night, which I think would be insane to do that right now, but they are back on CC or CEO, sorry not CCTV, my bad. They are back on CEO, which was a pretty favorable site for RTV when they brought out that Montaigne Strat, and it seems like they're going for it again, but will SSG allow them to just get picks for free? I don't think so. Based on their lineup, I think they want to be a lot more gun up against this composition. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. How are SSG going to respond to the Monty? Well, Rampy's... Ooh. Maybe Rampy is actually going to play up on him. That would, I mean, that would like almost instantly just remove the Monty because you know, Oryx. That could be the play. Rice likely still going to be on that repel though with the cutoff. Giddy, I guess, 
I'm gonna be the one to hit the lurk rather than Tristan, because that's what he did last time on that uh, on that square repel. That was actually that was interesting with the with the mirror being played instead of having Tristan go up square like he usually does on this attack. They had Giddy just repel instead of actually putting pressure there. Though now that there's no mirror, they have to worry about maybe we do see Tristan walk up. Yeah, I think we're just waiting on Mr. B to get a little bit closer, throw out those pocket EMPs and have the wall get opened up, but doesn't seem like it at this very second. And also Fultz, he's the one playing close to the elevator. He could maybe impact trick. Definitely a fan of that. If the wall can stay oh, yeah. closed, then RTV are going to really struggle with this gold tag. Does Fultz have utility to protect himself, though? There's the there EMPs is. coming out. Tristan looking to set up with a nade from below on that hatch. Mr. B probably calling that he's not sitting on top of it, though, but still the nade goes up. And now Fault's aware that someone's bearing down on him from below. He'll escape the elevator. And that's the second nade used for Tristan. So you receive the explosive lifelines. Keep it destroyed. So better angles now gathered for reality TV. And now that the wall has been opened up, again, trying to force back this Montana is going to be a lot more taxing, but. It's a bit of a stalemate still. Mr. B really cannot close this gap until he decides to just say, you know what, screw it, let's just go in now that we know no one's over by elevator for sure, and maybe I can gather more info to try to isolate a defender. Sees the player on main stairs, is calling out info, what? but Hot and Cold just swings on Hat, who's chilling in the middle of the staircase, not moving up and helping his teammate. Tristan's trying to find a response, but misses the shots, and Fultz is going on the hunt, but he loses it out. The knife! Oh! What? Tristan stabs Jack Yeti in the chest, but Mr. B goes down. The Monty's now Stay dead. Back. That's huge. Oh! Bosco, a beautiful shot. This could be over for RTV. Tristan and Rice are so low in HP, and they've got no genuine way of forcing back SSG right now. They were really relying on that Montaigne, and like you mentioned, he's already gone. SSG probably just shut out the round with that singular kill with Mr. B overextending and overexposing himself. Now the last two members of the attack so lit up, and they can't do anything against the rest of the defense. SSG. Map number one in the books. I will say it was a better attempt from reality TV. They looked improved, but they figured out those defenses way too late. I have to say as well, at the very end of that round, it, it didn't seem like the, the communication was fully there between Mr. B and Hat.